Hello and welcome to the Retained Recruiter Show. My name is James. And my name is Joe. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody, albeit a couple of minutes late. But um, yes, we're very uh, happy to be here and hopefully, we're technical difficulties aside, there we are. Very happy to be here today with some special guests. And James, I'm going to let you um, introduce our, our amazing guests for the day. Yeah. So as I said, uh, we just had a couple of minutes late. Uh, good old technology. Sometimes it lets you down, but uh, our guys, uh, they've managed to get in. So we're joined today um, by two very special guests from a company called Carbon60, uh, James Furling and Matt Roach. So uh, welcome, guys. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. Having us. Be with you. Yeah, good. Well, listen, before we get going, um, well, it's, it's always helpful for people to understand who's on the call. So Joe, Joe and myself are pretty well known. So it'd probably be good if you do a little introduction, perhaps a little introduction of your company. Um, and then we'll sort of jump into some of the questions that we, we're really looking forward to asking you guys. And uh, we do appreciate you joining us today. So, uh, yeah, give us a little intro to you. So I'm James Sperling. I'm the Director of Operations for the Engineering Business with Carbon60. I've been with Carbon60 for about 12 years. Um, we're part of the Impelum Group. Um, and within those, uh, within the Impelum Group, we form part of STEM, which is um, the offering of Lorien, um, SRG, and Carbon Sixty. So we're probably the largest STEM business within the UK, um, especially within the specialist markets of IT, medical, um, scientific, and engineering construction. Yeah, hi guys. I'm, uh, I'm Matt Roach, uh, client relationship manager here. Um, within the engineering sector, I've been with the business for about seven years now, um, and I kind of two years ago we've been on an evolution. I'm sure we'll, we'll come on to this, but I kind of looked after our exec search, and that's kind of since evolved into RPO and, and packaged projects, um, but all 100% retained. Excellent, excellent, guys. Listen, thanks for that introduction. Nice to see you've got so much experience as well in recruitment. So I'm sure people are going to enjoy listening to your story and as you mentioned there james you know you are probably one of the largest uh, uh, firms in your sector in there and i hope what you're going to tell us is you've got even larger over the last couple of years i hope that's going to be part of the story today yeah we have <laughs> very good very good is good yeah do you want to kick off with a question yeah, sure. I think, um, you know, we, um, oh, by the way, everybody, we, I know we've got quite a lot of people watching this today. So um, if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask James or Matt, uh, then please drop them in the comments. We'll keep an eye on that as we go through. It'd be great to find that. I mean, I know that, um, you know, I've been working with you guys for the last couple of years. Uh, we the, the title for this was, um, you know, transitioning over into retained, uh, but using the intro platform to help to do that. So it'd be great to find out what you were doing sort of before, I intro a bit about the business before you decided to make that shift. Yeah. So the engineering business, we work with customers that primarily um, man manufacture a physical product across engineering, aerospace, defense technologies and energy. So our core sectors um, are fairly uh, strong market sectors in the UK recruitment um, space. However, we only work with customers that manufacture physical products. So the same product life cycle, whether it's a pen or a, a radar or a missile or whatever, it, whatever the, the, the product is, it's the same manufacturing cycle that takes place. So we work with every skill set at every level within that cycle. So essentially what we do is we work from entry level right up through to board level. Um, so historically, we, we've placed interim contracts and permanent people in specialist roles throughout the country and Europe uh, for, you know, best part of 30 years as a business. Um, Pre-COVID, we were doing, you know, the traditional recruitment method, methods. Um, so for Matt and I, when we when we came back into the business after being at home and, you know, office shutdowns, the thought of coming back um, to do what we've always done was quite a daunting um, experience quite a daunting task really because obviously as you know in every recruitment business you're asked for growth year on year and it's like how actually do we get this growth mm. we can do it what we've always done more people more jobs more customers but it's messy it's untidy and it doesn't guarantee the return of investment so we were already doing exec search in pockets and we were pretty good at doing it and and really not because we're specialists in exec search we're just specialists in recruitment and the management of a process. So coincidentally, you know, I intro came along whilst we were looking to launch and elevate that exec search part of the business. So it was a partnership built on good timing, really. Yeah, I think I think also as well, what was key in the year prior to COVID, 
Um, I've done a lot of direct level placements um, in our existing customer base. Just, just so happened we had a 12 month period where there was a lot of director hiring. Um, but because the, the historic relationships were contingent, we were kind of working to the same T's and C's, albeit badging it up in, in kind of a, a, a different way. So we came back from COVID and we actually did some analysis on the 12 months prior. Yeah. And I actually looked at actually, you know, had we had exec search fees, we would have made, I can't remember what the figure was, but it, it was the biggest plus, um, more in terms of what we'd have been able to charge. Wow. And when we, there, we kind of, we didn't really have value add um, in terms of what we were doing. The, the customer was still kind of seeing the same journey. And yeah, as James alluded to there, we, we coincided with, you know, got in touch with you guys, looked at the product, and, and it was right for, you know, the direction of, of travel at that particular time. Yeah, and it was a it was a good time to meet up. I say everything you know things happen for a reason. It's very fortuitous in terms of timing. But I think what was important is you guys were looking to do something uh, a little bit different. So, what is it that prompted you to look for, a, if like, an alternative solution? Because as I said, you're experienced recruiters. You've done executive search. You know what you're doing. What is it that attracted you to to looking at something that's uh, let's say a technological uh, solution or addition to your your solution? What was it you're looking for? I think COVID was a trigger, James. We we came back and obviously some customers were getting busy bit by bit, but it was nowhere near as buoyant as it was pre-COVID. And obviously the, we had the inevitable conversations. Customers wanted to elongate payment terms, work on lower rates, wanted, wanted us to do more work, work harder for, for effectively less profit. Um, and, and that was the trigger. We, we knew we had to do something different. Yeah. What this technology enabled us to do was to put a... Uh, a kind of a manual process into a piece of technology and using the technology to actually demo the process and show the features and benefits and the value add without actually having to sell on who you were or your experience so it gave us a a platform to pitch off which instead of focusing on um the output of a pitch it was actually just getting the, the, the pitches and then but and knowing the, the the pitch, the sales process, and the tech, off the back of it, and off the you know following a certain certain sales process, you, the demo actually sold itself, which was a bit of a breath of fresh air, really. Because what what is probably traditional in recruitment is I can't replicate myself. Matt can't replicate ourselves, and obviously a lot of people don't like to do sales these days. So essentially it gave us another vehicle to actually scale up yeah okay so i, I that, love uh, yeah i was gonna say i love the um with you saying about how the the platform helps it to be it, it productizes it doesn't it? it makes it easy to see it makes it demonstrable so you actually have a demonstrable value proposition and i when I, when you say that I, I mean you know gosh the amount of people that i recruiters that we work with who in the past have really not struggled but but found it very difficult to um create to demonstrate the value to a client rather than like you said just going on years of experience or you know trust us we're recruiters um so i I like that i also like the fact that you you know you said you were sort of working on exec search in pockets but not necessarily in in all of those areas and that actually looking at the you know the coulda woulda shoulda when you go back and you looked at how much money you could have been making in terms of fees yeah. had it have all been exec I'm, i mean that that's a big that's a big motivation as well a lot of people would say that that's a really brave move one that not a lot of businesses take that leap so and you talked there about getting the pitch right the sales process and then the um the, the platform and, and using that as a springboard for your pitch but can you just talk us through how you kind of went from decision of yes we need to transition into retained to actually practically implementing it into your business yeah it was it was scary though to begin with i mean we uh, myself and james did the training with, with james o'brien and like most things you kind of you get off the corner and within 10 minutes you're distracted doing something else and it, you know a lot of it goes out and and, and i'll be honest i probably parked it for eight weeks and it was only when james said to me look we've got this on board we're paying for it we need to use it um but one thing i would say is it's the, le- the learning process is, is 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 tough and i mean i went through a two-month period where i at three o'clock every afternoon i would just pitch to james and pitch and pitch and pitch until I, I found my flow um and then once we had that confidence we we then went and spoke to existing customers because it was slightly warmer they they knew us uh, and then 
that that landed really well. It was something different that they've not seen before. Yeah, and surprisingly, people would you'd probably imagine that it was easier getting um, converting existing business into retained. Actually, that wasn't our experience. Um, in although we did have some easy wins in the early days uh, on some more problematic roles, which is typically where you are pointed to because most customers want you to deal with the hard to fill stuff um, before they give you the the easy bread and butter stuff. So that's been our experience. But equally at the same time, um, if you're if you're not if you if a customer sees you're able to provide the same service without the the retained or the the, the part payment or the or the staged invoicing, traditionally they 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 struggle to get that journey or transition into that journey of paying for your service up front. So we, we had a really good start to it. Uh, a little bit of a, um, a slight conversion with the existing business, but primarily most of our wins have come from new customers, actually. Yeah, well, one thing I would say, Joe, just to caveat that is, I think it's really important. You can't have a consultant that's gonna dip in and out of this, do a bit of contingent. You have to, I lived, ate, slept, and breathed this for mm -hmm. months on end, and I was fortunate that James allowed me the time to get up and running with it and then when the wins came they, they came and they came big yeah i think I, again i just want to sort of congratulate you matt uh, and, and you as well james for sort of you know working together on this because it is that perseverance it's, it's interesting what you said you know and it's, it's you know, i hope people listen to this it wasn't easy you know mm -hmm. this is you're changing the way you're doing things and it's so easy you know we see this it's very easy for someone to slip back because the path of least resistance to say oh, i'll just keep on doing what i'm doing i'm doing okay but you, because you'd actually analysed how much money you could have had, going back to Joe's coulda, shoulda, woulda, uh, scenario, I think maybe that was part of the motivation that helped you. But, you know, hats off to you for, for going through it. And again, the other important thing that I heard you say that is every, you know, living and breathing it, but actually every day at three o'clock practising it until you get into your flow. And then what happens, it becomes second nature. And what we start to see, and I think this is true for you guys as well, it starts to become part of your DNA. Yeah. yeah. This is what we do. Yeah, so there's no point in me going backwards and actually offering, you know, you know, down selling a service. I've actually got a service I truly believe in. And it's interesting. Mark Clinch has put up a question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether you guys have seen it on screen because I'm not sure whether you're on a phone or what. He says, "What part of the proposition do clients value the most?" That's a great question. Thanks, Mark. A couple. Of yeah, I think first and foremost is the fact that no, I mean, you know, James, you'll know this during the training. One of the first questions that you ask the customer when you're when you're qualifying the role, you know, when was the last time you checked your supply chain processes or your manufacturing processes? And the answer is generally, yeah, we're always looking at continu continuous improvement. Ask them when the last time they changed their recruitment process. They haven't. They've been receiving CVs for 20 years. So first and foremost, you, you'll give them something different. Um, it's a three-way interactive um, process. Because I think what happens with a lot of contingent, you're, you're doing lot, lots of really good work behind the scenes, but because it's Productized, productized, if that's the word. Uh, they they don't see the work. It, it's not tangible. It's not real. They just see the inbox, and you're the same as everyone else. Yeah. So game changer. And obviously the McQuaid profile. Well, I mean, we've got customers that absolutely um, use it as part of their interview process. They take the, the suggestions. Um, yeah. It, it's been an absolute yeah, and you know the phrase I use all the time, guys, is yeah, the, the fact is that your process, the value proposition, it's about utilising multiple layers of scientific and objective assessment to help the client, the employer, make more informed hiring decisions. And I think that's the value that you bring to the table. It's not it's not just about candidate identification because that's what a contingent recruiter does. I find the CVs and you choose which one you like. You know, and, uh, yeah, that's what it is. This is a, a much more thorough and complete service, but you've still got to go in and pitch it. You know, people... People aren't sort of you know, queuing up at your door saying, oh, I'd love to buy some retained recruitment from you today, James, or, or Matt. That doesn't happen, does it? Uh, James, I've got that with it, that it got to the point whereby if the guys in the office onboarded a contingent new client, they, they'd hide it from me. Like, oh, God, Matt's going to be all over him trying to pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think another thing to add in, especially in the candidate for market, is, is attracting the right candidate with the right proposition. You know, you've got the candidate briefing back. You scope out the role. You're really actually embedding the um, the qualification process to ensure that you're getting the right hire. Mm. Um, so I think in a capital market where talent's been hard to obtain, it actually sided really well with us launching um, this uh, in the way that we did. So it's definitely how educate 
do what you've always done, get what you've always got. And then obviously customers hiring candidates, losing them six down the road. They're not the right culture fit. That's really helpful. Mm. Yeah. Also done as well is elevated relationships. I mean, recruitment's notorious for having the master slave relationship, being all the rest of it. But because this is A, the payment payments that are invested in it to begin with. But that it kind of levels I think if we we're newsreaders, Joe, we'd be saying we've got a little bit of a technical problem here with the microphone. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Actually. I thought maybe it's just me and my audio, but yeah, I think we're, we're getting we're getting about two thirds of everything you're saying, which is still brilliant, by the way. But we get it's the, maybe the other third as well. Um, but we uh, to pick up on. Yes. Yeah. Go on, James. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think one of the things said it, it's about, and, and I want to go on to other parts of your business where you've really grown it as well because you spoke there. But I think just a couple of points of people listening in on because your relationship is very different. You know, you you, you know, you were talking then, James, uh, uh, Matt. Sorry about the the master slave relationship, but this is more peer to peer. The client's got a problem, and you're the solution provider, so you're there to help them. And things like having the time to be fully briefed and properly briefed for you then to be able to brief your candidates with things like a, a candidate briefing pack, which is a very simple document, but an extremely powerful document that people uh, should be using. But we understand why people don't use it on a contingent basis because it's too fast moving and too risk too too high risk. So I think again, some of those things that you've brought in to add value to your service support you with, I think are really good as well. Um, I just want to get a little bit of a gear change to see if we're still working because you know what what you, you've gone through there is obviously you, you'd learned the pitch, you know, you'd, you'd invested the time and effort to sort of have that uh, at your fingertips, and and no doubt you're picking up roles. And as I said, some of them are easy wins. And we do talk in training, uh, you know, through the Retained Recruiter Academy, which is our vehicle for for training all of our clients. We do talk about the fact that you know there's different strategies for different types of clients you know and sometimes people think oh well my existing client's going to be the easiest but the problem is they already trust you they know like and trust you already so they say, well, just keep on doing what you're doing guys because you're very good so it is really about honing that pitch and taking it out to new clients say this is how i work and i'm really fascinated about um you know because i know we've had this conversation you know a few months ago about how you you know because obviously you said at the beginning james that you don't just do you know, spot pieces of work, you do volume pieces of work. And so interested to hear your views on how, how this helped you change your approach to some of those clients. Yeah, that that real step change for us, Jack. We we were focused on winning singular vacancies or maybe packages of ones and twos. Um and then it became apparent that when you're pitching it initially, you're having different conversations with your customer. You're not actually speaking directly about recruitment. You're identifying their pain points in, from, from an invoicing point of view, multiple suppliers no cost control so patients naturally start to change and then you we kind of went down the road of winning mini rpos using the technology. So the first pack 12 rolls over a three-month period monthly retained um and then it got bigger the next the next package was 20 21 i think um and we're currently running a package of 59 for for, for one particular customer so it, it's it's really stepped up over nine nine to twelve months so, so the bit I want to sort of pull out there. Sorry, Joe. I might be, I might be hogging, hogging the limelight here because I'm, I'm really uh, keen to get this out. No, absolutely. So, so the bit there is, is how you're using the same process, yeah, you know, that high value proposition process for delivering multiple roles across an organisation. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, and we're, we're we're stripping it back as well. I mean, we're we're really flexible. I mean, the roles, the the package of fifty nine that we've got is is really diverse in terms of you know skill sets or slightly shop floor right the way up to senior engineering positions and depending on the role we're stripping it back you know the the, the camera technology video technology isn't relevant to the role. so we, we just tailor it and manipulate the back office of the system to suit what the customer wants yeah and i think that configurability of, of making you know modularizing the, the service for different types even though it's across the same company so if it's a more senior hire you might use all the bells and whistles for want of a phrase um whereas you know you're still using the platform and the process to sort of bring people in at a, at a lower level perhaps so that's really really fascinating to see i'll let you ask a question joe <laughs> i was i was just watching that then i was really interested <laughs> i forgot i forgot i was presenting um i've got loads of questions but i'm going to start with so um you were talking about sort of pitching obviously to various different clients and things we've got a lot of clients who come into our intro people that approach us 
who want to make the transition but but don't really know how to so if i mean i know we've got a lot of business owners that are watching this today what advice would you give to them if they wanted to take the leap what kind of practical things can they start thinking of or doing in their business that's, that might help them to start that journey I, th I think you've got to be prepared to invest the time and whichever individual is going to take this project on and try and you know change the way in which you're trading with the customers you have to give them time you know take the target pressure off their head for three or four months um give them the time away from the desk to just i, I, I would recite the, the pitch in the shower in the car mm. as i said to, to james once a day he would throw challenging questions back at me um and we didn't really hit go live date and so i felt like i i was as far in my learning as i could be um so i think it's just time understanding and investment because it when it yields it yields well I'd have to get a role play, James, uh, Matt. Sorry, and see uh, see how how that went. I'm sure we recorded it. Yeah, <laughs> I just think to add to that, I think I, I suppose the fortunate side of of my business is that I have quite a sizable team and sizable um, customer base, and this was a uh, just a sort of this didn't get everyone's buy in straight away. This was we were there was a, I suppose a perception with some of the more traditional seats guys in the team that oh what are they doing you know this you know the old methods work the best you know this wasn't received in turn just off the bat we had to really make it work and especially when we were trying to get all over the customers that had bought because when we were tr trying to flip them into retained programs or projects with a singular or multiple vacancy a lot of these guys didn't want it they wanted to work the way they've always worked because actually we're putting more pressure on us to do it this way than we are contingent. Because if you don't put a contingent or what's the repercussions, there isn't any. You don't get a fee. Yeah. This put us under a lot more pressure in delivery than it has on contingent. But what it has given is guaranteed. Is yeah. So we put the pressure back on ourselves to deliver. So just to encourage people, like, I'd rather pay knowing I got, I'd rather work knowing I've got money in the bank than actually work for free. Because you've got to value what you're doing, and that's that's been our journey. I don't see. Yeah, it. yeah I think uh, the our delivery guys they they like that first um, upfront feel figures, but when it came to like I've got a date whereby you have to submit and uh, walk around ahead, you know, walk around the bear with a sore head. But 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 what we we've, we've grown, we've evolved, to this, but we've now got two or three specialist people that we, when we get retained. From, they go straight to them. They know the process. They know the pressure. They know how to work it. And um, it's not for everyone from a delivery perspective. But by, you know, everyone's navigate the work accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. The the um when you say it's not for everyone, that's so true. And um I think that applies to clients as well, doesn't it? Because yeah. I think going once you're converted, which I do think that you do, you go through a period of conversion with this, don't you? Where your mindset shifts and you think, wow, what was I what was I doing before? You know, um, yeah. why have I ever done it any other way? But then once you're converted and you take that out to the market, I think you think that everybody is probably is going to want this as much as you. But I do think that we see a lot of the times that clients are maybe very entrenched in this contingent normal way of doing things, and it can be difficult to get them out of that sometimes yeah. as well. And, and sorry, to be honest, we, we, you know, not every program goes well and you do have some challenging conversations on it and not every customer sees the benefits of it um, because equally they have to be brought into it. And if they're not, then they're not going to get the results they've paid for. And, you know, that does happen. Yeah, I think also James has got an expression that where there's chaos, there's cash. So, you know, company restructuring, investment, um, even downsizing in some instances, you know, they're, they're all prime companies to be speaking to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so without, hopefully without any state secrets or uh, impelling secrets, so how, how well have you guys done from this? James? Uh, <laughs> certainly not retiring, but um, I would, <laughs> over the last two years, we've probably written nearly a million. Yeah. And have you won any awards? Uh, yeah, Matt won Salesman of the Year last year. For, for launching this really and delivering um, a sizable program. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's what I say. And that's one of the reasons why we invite you on today. And because it's it's not about the technology, it's also about the impact that you guys, you know, the input that you did. And uh, just to pick up on the point Joe was talking about there um, and that you were highlighting, Matt, is it takes dedication to do this. Um, and, you know, you were fortunate because 
you you know between the two of you you were granted the time to actually sort of you know go down that room and you said you know make sure you're not sort of kpiing somebody for a period of time whilst they're transitioning into this one you know that's a, a luxury uh, that not everyone can provide and it's one of those challenges that people face when saying how do i do it and you know the mistakes that we've seen made in the past is sometimes you try and adopt a dropped it over the whole organization you know that wouldn't work um and they, yeah, because it's not it, it's not something we'd necessarily convey but having um having an advocate so so matt is the advocate here within the organization for you james isn't he? he's he's the guiding light on this one uh, and obviously he's, he's strongly supported by you so i think that's that's one of the success measures that uh, people have seen you know, it's not about it's not for everybody um but it's about sort of having somebody who wants to do something different and i say it's because i think that realization that you've come across um knowing that you know we're leaving money on the table we can do a better job you know how do we do it and you found the way to do it so i think that's what's really fascinating i think my my i mean james was i used to get really nervous before pitches and then the penny dropped and i thought you know what this customer doesn't know if i've said this in the wrong place they doesn't know ask the wrong question and yeah so actually i'm driving seat from the get-go yeah do you remember one of the things we say in training uh, uh matt is you know you can never get the, the pitch wrong you can just get it more right every, every time you do it because the client the prospect doesn't know what you're meant to say uh, and, and what, what with the differentiation because that's one of the big things what you've created is a level of differentiation in your business that all of your competitors just don't have because all of your competitors just go in and say hey we've been doing it for 10 years we're you know, experienced in the engineering market or whatever it may be uh, and we're really good trust us because we've got a big database and access to all the candidates you can say let me show you what we do this yeah. is what we do this is how we do it and and as i say that uh that fear sometimes or nerve mm -hmm. come before um a pitch um and, and again come back to the word you used earlier flow once you've got your flow you know you go in and you've got You've got a guide you know where you're going you know your structure you can get pulled off and pulled back but you know how to come back to the center and actually complete what it is that you need to do and i think that's the bit that you've you've mastered you've yeah. mastered the ability just to you know we call it stress-free selling yeah you don't you're not stressed when you're going because you know what you've got to talk about so it's good from that side of things i think it's nice to ask for business as well i think it's you know if you look at sales traditional improvement you know it's sold on yourself or you know your database like you mentioned but actually once through the process or you know, that they're all ready and the way you question them, they're all ready to say yes anyway yeah we've asked customers that what you know what, why did you say yes for a table why did you and, and a lot of them yeah. <laughs> never question that's because uh, a lot of recruitment's not selling is it it's just taking job orders being being blunt about it so there's a great question yeah. on there's a great question on screen isn't there joe Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, read our minds. I think this is a brilliant question, uh, probably to end with as well. So, are you planning to scale the service within your organisation, and how? So, what's the what's next for Carbon Sixty? Well, we're kind of a little bit like everyone else in recruitment at the moment, kind of victims of our own success. Um, mm -hmm. The you know, like, like most companies, um, stretch the limit. Um, James, I think probably we will look we'll look at. Yeah, I think but... I think we've already seen this platform merge into some of the other STEM brands already. So SRG in particular, they're using it. Um, we do have- um, Our construction division adopted it as well. Yeah, so we do pitches on behalf of the, the built environment division. Um, and this does form part of the STEM search strategy anyway. So I think to answer the question, yes, we have scaled it up. I think, I think this forms, this, Formed part of one of the services that we offer here within Carbon Sixty Engineering, but equally, um, I would imagine it would have a standalone division in time, um, which it kind of has now. But it, it, at the moment, it, it sits within a another another manager. But I would imagine over time we would we would separate it out and have a purely dedicated, scaled up team, someone booking appointments because uh, we would need to to make sure that we got the end to end process right appointment demos delivery implementation that sort of thing yeah well well listen um it's been fascinating to listen to your journey and if anybody else wants to know you know how we can help you do that you can see there's a, a message on screen just go to www.retaincore.com you can book some time with us and we'll share with you our thoughts on how we can help you uh, transition in perhaps the way that uh, james and matt have and you so eloquently spoke today about uh, your journey and we appreciate it uh, you know particularly with some of the technical problems we had at the beginning so thanks very much for that joe anything to, to wrap up yeah, no, just um, thanks very much, guys. I think it's always really interesting. Myself and James do these weekly, if not fortnightly. And, um, you know, 
as much as we like to think that people like to listen to us, actually, people really like to listen to you guys because you're out there at the coal face and you're doing it, you know, and you're kind of you're making you're making mistakes, but then you're, you're learning from them and growing. So um, it's a pleasure. Thanks for taking time out of what we know is your very busy schedule uh, to come here and to hopefully, you know, share some of your pills of wisdom with our, our network. So, yeah, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Pleasure, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. All the best. Yeah, well, Listen, guys, we enjoyed working with you the last couple of years and look forward to working with you over the next few years as well. So thanks very much for your time today. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. We'll be back again next week where we're talking about how recruitment technology can impact on your business. So join uh, Joe and myself next week. We won't have any guests, I don't think. Maybe you can find one, Joe. But anyway, we look forward to welcoming you back next week. Thanks for listening today. It's been a, a pleasure as always. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah.